Okay, let's take a look at pendulums, but first a little review of a spring mass system. And we'll find that if we know that well, we can make analogies with the pendulum system uh, as a simple harmonic motion system. So we have a mass on a spring, and it's on a frictionless surface. The spring constant is K. And we can draw a free body diagram if we want. And if I have to the right positive, and I extend the spring, the spring would be pulling back in the negative direction. If I compress the spring, the spring pushes back um, opposite to the direction of x. But usually we just say the force of the spring is kx, and when we do a graph we make it positive, but if you have to think about the direction of the spring, just think how springs work. And we can write out the period equation. Period is 2 pi square root of, well, we know it's m over k for spring mass, but in general it's inertia over the force constant. And so for a system that's going in a straight line, we know inertia is the mass, and the force constant is always going to be the slope of the force versus displacement graph. And we'll find out also if it's a rotational system, it'd be the torque versus the angular displacement. And so slope is the force constant. And so for a spring mass system, we replace inertia with m and the force constant with k, and that's our period. And then we know angular frequency is 2 pi over the period, the same equation as angular velocity. So if I put this equation in for the period, I get the angular frequency is square root of k over m. So you can actually remember this instead, and then always solve for the period. And if some of the forces in the x equal ma, and again, I'm ignoring the minus sign. There is one here. The x is always opposite to the direction of the acceleration. And I can solve for the acceleration. It's kx over m. And k over m, we know, is omega squared. If I square this, I get k over m. And so that's sort of another way to derive the equation for period is use Newton's second law either for linear motion, or we'll see this works for rotational motion, and set the force equal to ma, and then replace uh, a with omega squared x, or whatever the displacement is. And now you can solve for omega, and for a spring mass system, it's square root of k over m, and that equals 2 pi over the period. So solving for the period, I get this. So we have two ways of coming up with the period of a spring mass system, or really any simple harmonic motion system. We have a generic period equation. It's always going to be 2 pi square root of the inertia over the force constant. And for a spring mass system, since it's just going back and forth, it's not rotating, the inertia is the mass. And then the force constant is always the slope of the force displacement graph. For a spring mass system, that's little k, so we get that. Or we can use Newton's second law, f equals ma, solve for a. And so if I solve this for omega, the x cancels out, and I get omega square root of k over m, and omega is 2 pi over the period, so I can also solve for the period. Uh, so knowing this will help us with the other systems, like a simple pendulum. And so I have a mass on the end of a string, some angle holds back some angle theta, length of the pendulum is L, that'd be measured to the center of the pendulum, and just a little review about what a radian is, a uh, radian is the ratio of the arc length to the radius of the circle, so you can see this is part of a circle, so I get this. And so I could also solve for the arc length, which would be the angle in radians times the radius, which is the length of the pendulum. And so that is the displacement in a um, simple pendulum. It's the arc length. So free body diagram, I have tension um, toward where the string is tied. I have weight straight down. This would be angle theta. And I make positive x the direction of the acceleration of the tangential acceleration. We're not doing centripetal acceleration here. So some of the forces in the x equals mg sine theta. And so right away we have a problem 
It doesn't look like this is a simple harmonic motion system. For a spring mass, the force was a constant times the displacement. Here it's a constant, mg, times sine of theta. And we know sine theta is not a linear function. But for a small angle theta, sine theta is almost, I probably should say almost, equal to theta in radians. And so if you look at a table, you can see at 5 degrees, uh, there's no difference out to the thousandth place. 10 degrees, there's one thousandth of a difference. 15, a little bit more, but still almost the same. 20, still pretty close, but starting to deviate. And then 25, getting further apart. So if you restrict your angles to small theta, and that depends on how much air you're willing to accept, theta in radians and sine theta are the same thing. Definitely within 10 degrees, that's a pretty good assumption. They usually say out to 20. There's no hard, fast rule. So that means I can re replace sine theta with theta. And then up here, uh, theta is x over l. So if I put that into there, I get mg x over l, and mg over l is a constant times x, just like the spring mass system. So now everything we did for the spring mass we can use for the pendulum. I can graph force versus the, versus the displacement. The slope and then instead of being little k would be this collection of constants, the mass of the pendulum, little g, and the length. And if we want the period of a pendulum, if we use the generic equation for period, 2 pi square root of the inertia over the force constant, well, it's accelerating tangentially, so the inertia is the mass, and the slope is the force constant. And so if I replace inertia with mass, and I replace force constant with mg over l, the m's cancel, the l moves back up to the numerator, and I get the equation for a simple pendulum. You could also use Newton's second law, F equals MA. And so the force is mg over L times x. And so they, and I set that equal to MA. And we know A is omega squared x. So the x is cancel. The mass cancels. And I get omega square root of g over L. We also know that's 2 pi over the period. Solve for the period, you get the same thing. And so you can solve for it two different ways.